Hello everybody, this is Dana Telvik, and today we're looking at a, uh, a culmination of about a month's worth of work, I'd say. Uh, this is the UC recast of the model Bingo uh, Dual Gundam, I mean Blue Dual Gundam Conversion Kit. Uh, now, there we go. Uh, in comparison to the colors it's supposed to be in the anime, mine is slightly darker, but that's mainly because this project was a test for a uh, airbrush. I had someone who had an airbrush in their attic and some paints. They wanted to see if they worked, so I said sure. I Whoa. This thing's a little unstable because I tightened. Something weird happened with the hips after I top coated it. But, uh, so they had an airbrush and some paints and they wanted them tested. And I've had, I had this kit sitting around for a couple weeks by that point. And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll test it out, see how it all works. And I'd say it came out pretty good. Obviously, if I did it again, I would actually mix the paints to be more show accurate and I would probably do maybe like three or four coats instead of the two coats that I did for most colors. Um, I also wanted to upload a video about this just to have a one-stop shop video that I could easily go back to to uh, understand the proper resin kit uh, build process because there's a lot of videos about building resin kits but you got to go to like five different videos before you understand how to do it yourself so I wanted a one-stop shop kind of video for that as well. Now in comparison to the original kit after putting on the resin kit you all you really lose is the butterfly joint in the torso and a little bit of range on the arms because of the new armor. So having this on actually has, gives you more range than the original Assault Shroud parts, which I don't have for comparison because I sold those parts to someone uh, since I didn't need them anymore because you can't attach them once this kit is on. Uh, yeah, the resin was really high quality despite being a recast. There wasn't like any bumps or anything that I had to sand out. All the bumps you see on this is because I did a bad paint job rather than the actual quality of the resin. Uh, there were some kind of not okay nubs and the resin on the torso armor was really brittle. I actually had it break on me, but I ended up not fixing it because I liked it better after I broke it. Um, one thing that you do have to do your there are three things you have to do yourself to this kit that the instructions don't tell you to do and those are create a pin and hole or some way for attaching the shield to this arm I'll uh, pop some pictures of that process up on uh, the screen now and then another thing you have to do is for these rifles here you have to create a pin i just used a piece of a uh, runner from i believe a gigantic arms kit but i might be wrong i did, i can't read the name of the runner it was just a runner i had sitting in a koto bokia extra runners bin uh, now i gotta fix the focus because it's all messed up <clears throat> Uh, then for the hands, the blade hands that it comes with, which these are really the only sour part of the kit. I'll actually grab out the other one because it came with two, but I didn't make both of them for one reason in particular. And that is the other one broke before I even opened the box. And of course, ah, there we go. So yeah, this is the other one it came with. 
and as you can see, it's missing a knife. It just broke before I even had to open the box. Uh, but this actually can show better one of the modifications you have to do. This peg here is way too big for the slot on the hands for slotting it in. So what you can do, this isn't what I do did, but what you could do is you could file this down, maybe make it the right size. But what I did instead, just because I have blue tack sitting around, is I just clipped off that tab, put some blue tack, and held it in. Uh, so that's how I fixed that problem. Um, I have a ton of leftover parts from this kit that I never ended up using. Nearly like half of all the... Whoa, jeez, it just fell over. Nearly about half of all the parts from the kit I didn't even use. Because they were for the heavy weapon system for the kit. And I didn't want to build the heavy weapon system. I just wanted it to be roughly show accurate. As you can see, the gun connection on the arms and the backpack connection is kind of loose. But that's fine for me. I don't really care because this is mainly going to just be standing somewhere. This isn't one of the kits that I plan on posing all the time. And as you can see, this bit fell off. And the reason that fell bit fell off is it has a track on the shoulder for having this slide up and down. But on this shoulder, I somehow ended up attaching it crooked. So it's not pushed in all the way, so there isn't enough friction. And I'm not gonna risk taking it apart. And since that one's easier, and it's for the side where I actually had the knives completed, <clears throat> I decided against uh, I decided against fixing it because it can just slide up and down. So if I ever do try and do an animation with this, then I have one that works easy and the other one it stays shut, which only one of them is supposed to be like that anyway, if it was show accurate. Uh, now for a little bit of an explanation of the resin process, since that's basically it for the review of the kit. So what you're going to want to do when you're making a resin kit is the parts, they come like this. They're not very good. They're in the wrong color, everything like that. So what you're going to want to do is you want to get, you want to get a container and you want to put the part in it. You want to put soap and water or water and denture cleaner. And you want to leave it sitting for a night, well, for 24 hours since you put it in. Then you're going to want to take those parts, take them out, empty the container, brush off any residue, then put them in a container of water for that same amount of time. Um, and then after that, you'll take them out, you'll dry them, and you'll leave them to dry for another 24 hours. And obviously, when you leave them to dry, you want them in somewhere where dust won't get on them, because that kind of defeats the whole purpose of cleaning them. And then what you'll do is you'll spray them with a primer, and that'll let you see any imperfections in the mold, stuff like that, to clean off. Uh, and before you do all of this, actually, you should uh, clean up the parts as much as you can, can from what you see and do a test fit to make sure everything fits. But I forgot to say that. Um, then once that whole process is done and you've primed it, sanded it, any imperfections, primed it again probably, then you'll take them to your airbrush, get them on sticks or whatever, and you'll apply your first coat. Uh, depending on the type of paint you use, leave it dry for 24 hours or however long that paint needs to dry. Check up on it, check tolerances, stuff like that. Put another coat, however many coats you need to do, and stuff like that. And then you assemble the kit. Now what I've found is that this glue is works decent for assembling resin kits and for assembling 
plastic parts in general if you're doing modifications because it doesn't it doesn't bond by melting i don't think yeah or if it does melt it doesn't melt as extremely as other super glues would granted in comparison to other glues it takes longer for it to dry but i think that's a decent trade-off no damage to your parts but it takes longer so as for features of this kit, it comes with this extension for the rifle, which you're going to have to chop off the barrel of the rifle to attach. Uh, obviously it comes with the knives, these things that open. Uh, it comes with the guns, which can pop off the arm, and then there's a handle that folds out. I didn't glue the front end of my gun yet, so I don't want to take them out and flip them out because the handle might fall out. So I'm not going to show that. And then also the beam sabers can come out there and just work as regular beam sabers, just like on the original kit. Uh, the resin kit comes with the parts to mount two bazookas on the backpack. So you can see by... Whoa, jeez, this thing is really unstable right now. I just don't have the feet posed correctly. I just brought it home. From going over to a friend's place to have him drill a part for me. Uh, so it doesn't want to stand. And also, I think I might have accidentally glued some of the knee joints so the knees don't bend correctly. But if the camera can pick, pick it up, there's that Lego axle kind of hole there. And it comes with parts that you can attach here to hang one of the bazookas along the back as you can see from this image. It also comes with stuff to mount the rail cannons on the shoulders, but I wanted it to be show accurate, so that's how I modified it so that it didn't use those parts, so they're just extra parts now that I have no use for. Um, there's maybe like a few touch-up things I need to do yet with this kit, but I don't know when I'm going to get around to doing them. And that is, I need to paint the inside of these thrusters here, and then paint the inside of some of the other thrusters and stuff. And then I need to figure out why the hips are so loose and try and fix them, because they pop out all the time now for some reason, and I don't know what I did. It might have been my top coat. I might have made a mistake, and I should have taken more of the kit apart before I top coated it, because I top coated it with the whole thing assembled and I think that might be why the hips are loose my top coat might have ate some of the poly cap or something but overall I'm just happy to have a 1 100 scale blue duel and if I can find a legitimate one for a decent price I might hunt down model bingo's 1 100 stargazer but probably not when I when I did have the opportunity to get one, it was like 200 something. And then I, literally I had gone to hit buy and the second I hit buy, it went out of stock <laughs> before I even completed my transaction. So I wasn't able to get a hold of one of those. Um, and then maybe if I ever find a Buster Gundam going for a decent price, because right now they're going for a lot. I might customize a Verde Buster and then get a Strike Rude, I mean a Strike Noir to have the whole Phantom Pain team and then the Stargazer for a display, but that probably won't be for a while. I've got a bunch of other projects that I should be doing and other responsibilities, but overall I'm pretty happy with how this kit turned out obviously there's some areas like the shoulders here where you can see i should have put like another coat because you can see the resin peeking through but i kind of i kind of like how it is because it kind of creates like a highlight on the corners uh, and obviously there's well not obviously but there are like some areas where there's too much paint accumulated or areas where there's no paint at all where there should be but I ran out of the blue I used for this, and I don't feel like hunting down more of it, so. For now, this kit is how I want it. 
It looks decent. It stand it sits on my shelf nice. Looks nice next to my uh gunner Zaku Warrior and stuff like that, so that's all that matters. It's a kit that looks nice. Which is what I bought it for. Doesn't necessarily matter if it the hip joints have decided to just never peg in. And they will fall out at a moment's notice. For some reason. But that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys whenever I upload next. I've had a script for a series done for like three or four months now. And I should really get to animating it before I lose the ability to animate stuff. So, have a good one, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Oh, and also, big shout out to, um, actually, there'll be links in the description to the Gundam channels that I took inspiration from, slash inspired me to buy a resin kit and work on one. So, those will be in the description. If you want to check them out, they're all way more talented than me, and they've got some really crazy builds. Uh, one of them right now is working on making a uh, combiner model of a bunch of Titans mobile suits. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. And uh, there's other ones who are doing cool stuff too. Uh, one of them, I think, is working on a perfect grade ground Gundam right now, so that's looking pretty good, and you guys should check that out too. So, have a good one. Bye.